Good evening, I'm David Brown and this is the Northern Sun Experience. Once again, NSIC Volleyball is the cream of the crop in Division 2. Last week's National Coaches Poll featured seven NSIC teams in the top 20, including six in the top 10 and the top four overall. And with true conference play starting last weekend, we were in store for some great nationally ranked matchups. That started last Thursday in Marshall, Minnesota, with number four SMSU hosting number 20 Augustana. Early on, Mustang showing off some defense. Aisha Odin and Megan Larson team up for the killer block at the net for an early SMSU lead. Back come the Vikings. The long volley eventually ends when Ashley Wilson gets the Mustangs going the wrong way. She had eight kills on the night. Later on, Mustangs show a little offense. Taylor Reese goes up and goes cross court for the kill, part of her career high 27 kills on the night. More Mustang magic here as Larson does a quick tap over. SMSU would win two of the first three sets, but Augie would come roaring back and steal one on the road. Anna Sakura with one of her five kills, and the Vikings win it in five, three to two. On Thursday, the number two team in the country, Wayne State, visited Sioux Falls. First set, Wildcats with some defense from their most experienced. Alex Opperman with the emphatic block of the net, one of her eight blocks on the evening. More great defense from the Wayne State seniors. This time it's Natalie Von Drack sending it back. You want more blocks? You got more blocks. Michaela Mestel and Alyssa Fraundorf are in on the stop this time. Cougars would not get any sort of offensive rhythm going, but the Wildcats certainly could. Mestel with a huge kill down the line for Wayne State. And a little bit later, Mestel's serve can't be corralled by the Cougars. Wayne State tops Sioux Falls in three straight. Top 10 matchup on Saturday as number nine Winona State visited Concordia in St. Paul. First set long volley between the Golden Bears and Warriors has ended with Emma Lango's cross court too hot to handle for Winona State. Later in the set, it's the preseason player of the year, Riley Hansen going up for the center court kill. Golden Bears take set 125-17. Second set, more dominance from Concordia, only this time on defense as both Lang and Hansen team up for the block at the net. And then at match point, Emma Lang takes care of what she started with another kill. She and Hansen had 10 each for Concordia St. Paul as they top Winona State 3-0. The number three team in the nation, Minnesota Duluth, hosted Bemidji State on Saturday. First set, Bulldogs on the verge of closing it out, and they do so emphatically. Taylor Wisbrocker goes cross court for the kill. UMD wins set 125-7. Second set, Minnesota Duluth once again finishes off Bemidji State with authority. Allison Ollie gets it just inside the lines. Third set, Bulldogs put it away. Emily Torve sets it up for Sarah Kelly going cross court. UMD with a 3-0 sweep over Bemidji State. Northern State, 10th in last week's poll, visited Minot State on Friday. Minot State actually won the first set 25-21, but after that, the Wolves' defense was great in transition. Off the serve, two Northern girls come up for the block at the net. And later in the set, same spot, same result. The Wolves' D clamped down after that first frame, allowing only 41 total points over the last three sets as the Wolves come back with a 3-1 victory. So after a highly competitive first weekend of conference play, the latest national poll shows more of the same with some minor movement. Although the NSIC doesn't have the top four teams anymore, they still retain four of the top five. Concordia St. Paul is still number one with all 48 first place votes, while Minnesota Duluth moves up from third to second. Wayne State falls from second to fourth, while SMSU falls from fourth to fifth. Winona State remains at nine, while Northern State falls from 10th to 11th. But the biggest news is Augustana, propelled by their win at SMSU last week, jumping all the way from 20th to 14th. It's the Vikings' first ranking inside the top 15 since 2008. And with Augie's spot at 14, the NSIC now has seven of the top 14 teams in the country. Truly remarkable. When we come back, we switch gears to football to see if the Bemidji State Beavers can continue building toward a 3-0 record. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine and Dakota Land Honda.
Welcome back to the Northern Sun Experience. The first four games of the NSIC football season are interdivisional contests between the North and the South. And over the past two years, Bemidji State has gone just one and seven in those games. But this year's Beavers have flipped the script, winning their first two against the other division, including an eye-popping 28-point victory on the road last week at Minnesota State. Bemidji State hoping to move the 3-0 as they hosted Wayne State Saturday. Beavers up 3-0 in the first and adding to it. Jordan Hine to the right quarter of the end zone for Brady Schmidt. Six-yard strike extends the lead to 10-0. Wayne State trying to climb back in, but Zach Osborne's pass is picked off by Damon Benham. He goes 19 yards the other way, 17 zip after one. Into the second, Hine going to his left this time, finding Blake Holder for the 15-yard score. 24-0 Bemidji State. Wayne State cuts the lead to 24-7, but that's when Hine hits Jawan Richard in the middle of the end zone, 14 yards, and it's 31-7. Tahi Nomad would finish off the scoring with a couple of short TD runs, and the defense would remain stout as Bemidji State duplicates its score from last week in a 45-17 win over Wayne State. Another surprising 2-0 team, Concordia St. Paul, hosted 1-1 Minnesota Duluth in a shootout. No score in the first, Ron Johnson up top to Marcus Gustavuson coming on down. Great catch, 14 yards, 7-0 Golden Bears. Later in the first, Concordia showing off some defense. John Johnson is Johnny on the spot here. Right place, right time, 34-yard interception return, and CSP has a 14-0 lead. Next Bulldog possession, UMD gets on the board. Beautiful throw from Drew Bauer to Bo Bofferding down the sidelines. 52 yards cuts the Concordia lead to 14-7. Skip ahead to the second, it's 28-27 Concordia, and they pull off some golden magic. The backwards pass to Alquan Vickers, then he throws it to a wide open Elias Arlington. 73 yards on the wide receiver pass, 35-27 Golden Bears at halftime. Minnesota Duluth scored the first 17 points of the third quarter, however, capped by this 40-yard run from Bofferding. Bulldogs now on top, 44-35. Golden Bears hanging around later in the third. Another nice throw from Ron Johnson. Another nice catch from Marcus Gustavuson. Cuts the Bulldog lead to 44-42. Fourth quarter, Concordia retakes the lead. Johnson keeps it himself on the option, finding plenty of room on the right side. 31-yard run, and it's 49-44 Golden Bears. But the Bulldogs would have the last laugh in this wild affair. Darren Walker bounces to the left and fights his way to the plane for the three-yard score. A fantastic effort by Concordia St. Paul, but Minnesota Duluth would hold on for a 52-49 victory. When we come back, we check in on the rest of the football slate, including Minnesota State hoping to bounce back from their big loss at home as they visit St. Cloud State. Welcome back to the Northern Sun Experience. Minnesota State got a huge wake up call last week. As we mentioned earlier, the perennial NSIC favorite and number six team in the national coaches poll got blown out at home 45 17 by Bemidji State. It was the Mavs worst home loss since 2003. Minnesota State hoping to regain its mojo on the road at St. Cloud State, but the Huskies came out firing early first offensive play, and Nate Meyer finds his favorite target, Jameson Parsons, 69-yard pass down to the Maverick 10. The drive would stall, but on fourth down, Huskies run a fake field goal, and the holder Parsons rolls out and eventually finds Graham Miller for the 8-yard touchdown, 6-0 St. Cloud State. But it would be all Minnesota State after that. On their own fourth and goal, a lot of motion leaves Eric Fuller wide open for the touchdown. 7-6 Mavs. Same score in the second. Nick Pieraccini back at quarterback for MSU finds Brent Esser on a pretty throw to the left corner. Nine-yard strike and it's 14-6. Later in the second, Mavs continue the aerial assault. Off play action, Pieraccini goes deep to Ty Dennis. 48-yard pitch and catch extends the lead to 21-6. Still in the second, Maverick offense firing on all cylinders. Pierachini to Esser again on the inside slant from five yards out. Minnesota State led 35-6 at halftime. And after all that offense, the defense would put an exclamation point on the day. Jared Gillespie might as well be Dizzy Gillespie for the Mavs because they've got a brand new sound that sounds like an old classic. Jared jazzes his way 71 yards to the end zone for the pick six. And Minnesota State gets back on track with a 45-12 victory over St. Cloud State. Big game between a couple 1-1 one one teams, Northern State at Winona State. No score in the first when the little guy comes up big. Paul Preston's only 5'4", but this run is 7 yards for 6, and the Warriors take an early lead. 
Winona State receivers have been sure-handed for Jack Nelson this year, including Will Clausen with a great one-handed catch. And that drive would lead to another rushing touchdown for the Warriors, this time for Eric Berth. He gets in from five yards out, and Winona State's on top, 14-0. Later in the second, Nelson with all kinds of time. He'll rear up and find Cameron Johnson in the end zone. 37-yard strike. Warriors led 23-0 at the half and never let Northern State into the game. Christian McIlvain was just 9 of 22 for 68 yards and two interceptions. Winona State bounces back from a heartbreaking loss to Minnesota Duluth last week with a 26-7 win over Northern State to move to 2-1. Augustana coming off a big win at U. Mary hosted Minnesota Crookston Saturday. No score in the first, Trey Hyde on the slant to Matt Heller. Three-yard strike and it's 7-0 Vikings. Later in the first, Hyde will just keep it himself, using his speed and using the space to find the edge. Four-yard run and the lead doubles to 14-0. Still in the first, Hyde trying to show off more of his passing skills. Didn't need a whole lot with true freshman Jake Welshimer wide open. 21 yards for a 21-0 lead. Into the second now, Hyde to Heller once again on the slant, only this time Heller has more room to run. 55 yards to the house, 28 zip at that point, and Augustana tops Minnesota Crookston 56-3. Sioux Falls made the long trek north to Minot State this weekend, and on the very first play from scrimmage, Luke Papillion makes the Beavers pay. 72 yards on the read option, nothing but open space in front of him, and 18 seconds in, USF takes a 7-0 lead. Into the second now, still 7-0, but persistence pays off for Minot State. Stopped initially, Jacob Lopez bounces back to the left and dives to the end zone. A lot of effort for one yard, but it ties the game at seven. Next Cougars possession, however, they would take the lead for good. Max Mickey walks into the end zone for a 13-7 USF lead. It's 20-7 Cougars when Papillion takes pretty much the exact same path as Mickey for another rushing touchdown. 27-7 at that point. It's 34-7 in the fourth and watch Papillion use all of his athleticism, weaving inside, outside, around, back, throwing across his body to a wide open Brady Yo Rose, 24 yards out, and the Cougars top the Beavers 41-14. Southwest Minnesota State hosted the University of Mary Saturday. Marauders have been shut out the first two games of the season, but not anymore. Ben Jolliffe keeps it himself. 41-yard run, 7-zip U Mary. Ensuing kickoff, hard hit by the Marauders, prize the ball free inside the 15. And Colton Farmer would take it in a few plays later. 14-0 road team after one. But the Mustangs would gallop back into it. Blake Gimble on the screen to Devontae Beal, who weaves his way in from 12 yards out to cut the lead in half. Later in the second, no, this is not a replay, just the same play. Gimble on the screen, this time to Raphael Lawson Gale, 14-14 at the break. Second half, Marauders on top, 17-14, but not for long. Gimble to Lawson Gale again, this time from 25 yards away. Mustangs take a 21-17 lead, and they would not relinquish it. Later in the third, Gimble over the middle to Ty Stephenson. Another 12-yard touchdown makes it 28-17 SMSU. And they would roll from there. Mustangs top the Marauders 47-23. Finally, Upper Iowa took on MSU Moorhead Saturday. Off play action, Demetrius Card and Damon Gibson. Great grab for the score in an early 6-0 Dragon lead. Back come the Peacocks. Derek Portis with a short touchdown and Upper Iowa lead 7-6. Dragons take it right back. The screen to Corey Ambrose and he does the rest. 12 yards, MSUM leads 16-7 at the break. Move to the fourth, lead down to 16-14 when Austin Stone gets in from one yard out to extend the Dragon lead to 23-14. Later on, Portis gets his third touchdown for the Peacocks, eluding defenders, cutting the deficit to 23-21. Peacocks have a 25-yard field goal try for the win in the final seconds, but Brady Buschel can't come through, and the Dragons hold on for the 23-21 victory. Taking a look ahead at the Week 4 schedule, and MSU Moorhead will have to do more than hold on if they want to upset Minnesota State. The Dragons and Mavericks square off in Mankato at 1 o'clock on Saturday, along with Concordia St. Paul at Northern State. The rest of the 1 p.m. slate includes St. Cloud State at Wayne State, Winona State at U Mary, and Southwest Minnesota State at Minnesota Crookston. The lone 3 o'clock game pits Minot State against Upper Iowa, and then our big games of the weekend take place at 6. First, Augustana visits Minnesota Duluth in a battle of perennial playoff contenders, and then a matchup of undefeateds as 3-0 Bemidji State travels to Sioux Falls to take on the 3-0 Cougars. Of course, USF and Augie play each other in the key to the city game on October 1st, but they'll both have big challenges in this final weekend of interdivisional play between the North and the South. 
And the latest national polls reflect how big the eventual matchup between USF and Augie will be. Right now, Sioux Falls is the top NSIC team in the polls, checking it at number 14 in both the AFCA coaches poll as well as the D2Football.com poll. Augie Santa is just behind them, ranked number 16 in both polls. Minnesota State is 21st in the coaches poll, but 17th in the D2Football.com one. Meanwhile, there are two NSIC teams ranked in one poll, but not the other. Bemidji State is 22nd in the AFCA poll, while not among the top 25 in the online poll. Meanwhile, Minnesota Duluth is 21st in the D2Football.com poll, but not listed in the coaches poll. When we come back, we continue our season-long celebration of the NSIC's 25th anniversary and go through the first weekend of conference play in soccer. Welcome back to the Northern Sun Experience. As part of the conference's 25th anniversary, we'll be introducing you to new members on the NSIC's list of all-time greatest athletes all season long. And this week's induction was a key component of one of the NSIC's greatest dynasties. Congratulations are in order for former Concordia St. Paul volleyball player Maggie McNamara. She's the latest on the list of the NSIC's top 25 female athletes. She was the 2006 Conference Freshman of the Year, two-time NSIC Player of the Year, two-time National Player of the Year, and a four-time Coaches Association All-American. But even more importantly, McNamara was a vital part of Concordia St. Paul's first three volleyball national championships from 2007 to 2009, the start of seven straight national titles for the Golden Bears. So congrats once again to Maggie McNamara, the newest member of the NSIC's 25th anniversary team. Let's head to the pitch. Winona State hosted Minnesota Crookston on Sunday in soccer. Warriors already up 1-0 in the 28th minute when Courtney Weinchek splits the sea of Crookston defenders and goes cross-court for the goal her third of the year, and Winona State's up 2-zip. Fast forward to the second half and it's 3-0 now. Kendall Kie's first shot hits the keeper, but persistence pays off as the rebound shot finds the left side of the net, her first goal of the season. And Winona State tops Minnesota Crookston 4-0. Another NSIC favorite, Minnesota State hosted Minnesota Duluth Sunday. Mavs already up 1-0 and adding to it. Morgan Katu dribbling ahead, gets it by the goalkeeper Sisley Ng. Minnesota State on top, 2-0. And the rest of the game was all the Taylor Keneally show. First, getting it between the legs of the keeper Ng. And then a little bit later in the first half, the pass ahead to Keneally, who splits the Bulldog defenders, shoots it in off the left side. And finally in the second half, Keneally squares up and blasts one in top shelf from the right side of the box. Minnesota State wins at 5-0 on the freshman's first career hat trick. Big matchup Saturday afternoon as Augustana and Minot State met up in North Dakota. No score in the second half, the Beavers' Maritza Perez takes advantage of the ricochet, fires it in with her left leg. Minot State with a 1-0 lead. Just 24 seconds later, the Beavers strike again. This time it's Chloe Melton from 18 yards out. Minot State up 2-0. And they would wrap things up in the 78th minute with the Ninja. Ninfa Ramirez with her fourth goal of the season. Minot State takes down top-ranked Augustana 3-0. And it's obviously very early in the season, but an interesting dynamic emerging in the national soccer poll. Perennial favorites Augustana, Minnesota State, and Winona State are nowhere to be found, not even receiving votes. Meanwhile, the only NSIC team featured in the top 25 is Minot State at number 16. And Bemidji State is currently receiving votes. Beavers were 5-1 when the poll was conducted, including a win last Friday at Winona State. When we come back, it's DB's Picks, my top five plays of the past week in the NSIC. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back to the Northern Sun Experience. Once again, it's time for DB's Picks, my top five plays of the past week in the NSIC. At number five, we head to Minot, where Luke Papillion gets things going in a hurry. On the first play from scrimmage, the Sioux Falls quarterback finds some room off the right side and a clear path for a 72-yard touchdown. Watch it again, the read option sucks in the defender Christian Shade, and it's nothing but sunny skies for Papillion after that. Luke's long run starts things off at number five. At number four, guess who? It's Papillion once again, only this time showing off both his arms and his legs. After eluding a variety of Minot defenders, he throws back across his body to Brady Rose for a 24-yard touchdown. 
Papillion goes inside, outside, around back, keeps the play alive, and it eventually pays off. Everything came up roses for the Cougars, topping the Beavers 41-14, as well as coming up with the first two plays on my top five countdown. For number three, it's a three-sided connection with Concordia St. Paul. Ron Johnson throws the backwards pass to Alquan Vickers, who fires a laser downfield to Elias Arlington for the 73-yard triangle touchdown. Here it is one more time, Johnson hits Vickers on the lateral, and then Vickers steps up and finds Arlington wide open down the right sideline. This touchdown was spectacular, but the Golden Bears will shine even brighter later in our countdown. At number two, however, we go to St. Cloud, where the Huskies fool the Mavs. Off the fake field goal, Jamison Parsons rolls to his right and finds Graham Miller in the end zone for the eight-yard touchdown. Parsons has the Mavericks breathing down his neck from the very moment they find out it's a fake, but he stays cool under pressure, using the field to find Miller for the score. Unfortunately for St. Cloud State, that would be one of their few bright spots in a 45-12 loss to Minnesota State, but still enough to reach number two on my top five scoreboard. For number one, however, we head back to St. Paul, where Concordia St. Paul executes the fake punt to perfection. Watch the spotlighted player, Darius Chaps, takes the snap from the long snapper and goes 39 yards down into the Minnesota Duluth red zone. You'll want to see it again. Zooming in, you can see the long snapper just holds the football, and Chaps takes it right from him and takes advantage of a beautifully designed play. That drive would end with a Golden Bears touchdown. And while Concordia St. Paul would end up losing a 52-49 shootout to Minnesota Duluth, they take home two of the top five plays of the week, including the number one play. Once again, a thank you to all of our NSIC member schools for their time, video, and contributions to this week's show. We'll be back right here next week for yet another Northern Sun experience.